Welcome back. This is your old pal Hondo doing another video for you on a knife and a ferrocium rod for a survival combo. First we have the Gold Steel Fin Bear and we have the Nathan 407 Wine Humongous 4 inch 1 inch diameter ferrocium rod from our good friend Nathan 4071. We'll do a video on this. I got a fire going on in the background, burning some yard debris. But we're going to test them out, show you what this big old beast can do and what the fin bear can do. Hey okay, folks, the first thing we're going to take a look at is the fin bear knife. It is a design like a finished design of Puku knife, Puko knife. It has the Puko style design blade. It has a nice scanty bevel, but with a saber grind. It's uh, 8 inches overall in length. It's uh, 41, 16 German stainless steel. It's uh, 8 inches, 8 and a half inches overall in length. It's got a nice polypropylene handle that's kind of squared off. It's a plastic rubberized handle. And the sheath is much like a Mora. It has like a polypropylene. It has the belt loop right here where you can, uh, it has like a little notch right here where you can maybe set it up through a system, another knife system or something, or put it on your button on your coat. It's got a little drainage hole here. Seems to be a rock solid sheath. Um, it's not a bad knife. I've used it a little bit. The only thing bad about it, it doesn't have a 90 degree spine. Now, stainless steel, you know, you don't want to be beating it up too much. This would be good for your food processing type of knife, uh, meat, you know, skinning animal and game, you know, just doing finite task work in the campsite. Um, it's not too bad. Uh, I got some more stats. The weight is 2.8 ounces. The blade is 2.5 millimeters thick. So that's also the weight in the millimeter thick of the blade there. That's how thick the blade is. You could probably uh, grind down the spine to make it more ferro rod friendly. And next, we got the uh, one inch diameter Nathan's 4071 ferro rod he gave me last year. It's a beast, it's what it's called, the beast. Um, it's one inch thick, uh, it's waterproof. Um, if you want to sacrifice everything in your gear, just to carry this one fire starter, it'll probably last you forever. Uh, you could use it for like a signaling flare. If you're in danger and you see uh, people up on the hill and you're injured, or you could use it to start fires. Use a little bit at the end right there. You don't have to go around the whole top to use it. But it throws hell of a spark. A lot of people complain about the the ways in in the uh, his uh, ferrocium rods. I don't find it. Uh, it doesn't hinder the performance of the ferrocium rod. Um, down and dirty, it's a great ferrocium rod for a survival tool if you need it. Um, it's not bad. I mean, it's about a pound overall in weight, so it's pretty hefty. You could break acorns open with it, nuts, anything you find on the ground with it. So it's, it's an overall great product. I put a nice little fat wood handle on it. It's not all that great, but it works for me. I can hang it, put it around my belt while I'm walking with it. I use a pair of scissors. Uh, he did give me a high speed striker. I wasn't too much of a fan of it. So I just used the scissors I found in the drawer. They work plenty good for what I'm using it for. So that is the Nathan 4071 Beast. It's also waterproof. So if you drop it in the water and you pick it up, it'll always light again. So it's a never ending uh, waterproof type of. Uh, fire started. Chop with it a little bit. I'm going to baton with this thing. Uh, we're just going to chop with it first to do the chopping test to see how it works. If it holds up. And it chopped that pretty good. And we're going to bring it down here again. We're going to chop it again. 
we're chopping kindling here. Works great. Chopping kindling. There we go. Chop's great. I mean, it, it makes short work of wood real quick. Too bad, I guess. It have been worse. There you go. Let's see how she carves. I did cut myself, so this is a very sharp knife. Let's see how she cuts. As you can see, she cuts really good to make a tent peg. Uh, very good for a sh saber grind. This is not bad at all. You know, works really good for a saber grind. Okay, we're going to do a little notching here. Press cut notching. As you can see, we're going to make a notch here. Very easily makes notches. This is really hard wood. Not great at doing notches, but I'm trying my best here. Okay, there's your notch. Tent stake right here and notch. Does pretty good notch yeah, work. Batons wood. There you go. Some pretty hard stuff too. And she batons really good. not a very carvable type of wood but it works as you can see it does a decent job on this uh, locust wood it's not the ideal type of wood you want to use for making feather sticks by any means let's try some of this pine Stuff is wet. I tell you, it does overbite though. It doesn't. It doesn't really glide into the wood like a mora does, but it 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 does a decent job. It does a better job than a uh, maybe a condor does, so it ain't too bad. Let's see if I can get this other side here. doesn't really do a good job on feather sticking but you know it's 
making decent kindling with what I got here. Very uniformed uh, feather sticks by any means, but but that's partially to the hollow grind on this knife. It's not performing as good as it would if it was. Uh, but that this platform I'm using is not very great. See, it's a really knotty piece of wood. <laughs> It's not going to work all that great, but like I said, it's partially due to the hollow grind on this knife, which makes it not feather stick as good as maybe a Mora, but it feels good. It's not as bad as the Condor. The Condor wasn't really getting really good feather sticks with it. This one does have a tendency to overbite considerably. But it's performing fairly well for a thin blade knife with stainless steel. I'm not a fan of stainless steel by any means, but it works for what it is. Try this other piece of wood here. Okay, made short work of this kiln here. Uh, I think that would be enough right here to get this fire going here. Uh, all natural fatwood from all natural fatwood from those packets. It's nothing special, but it works. It's, uh, we'll see how it does on fatwood here. Uh, it's doing pretty good on the fatwood. It's gliding through the fatwood with ease. Downside about this knife is that it started, it got really dull during the test, so so it's not performing as good as it did when I first started out with it. So it has gotten considerably dull. I'm beating it up. And it's not really giving me good conformed feather sticks like a more I would. Ugh. There you go. About as good as it'll get with this uh, with this piece of fat wood. I'm gonna take the fat wood itself in the scraper and scrape a little bit of the Maya dust off of the uh, ferrocium rod to help it to catch fire. And then when I gotta run over to the fire and drop this into the fire, into the fire pit as fast as I can. Now for the Nathan 4071 Beast, one inch diameter ferro rod. Just gonna use a little bit of it, like right here, at a little bit. And there she goes. She's off and running. Now I gotta transport the fire into the fire pit. And we got the smalls and the smalls on top of that to get it going. It's going. And there we go. We got a fire. I oh, like this uh, fin, this fin bear, cold steel uh, knife, and the Nathan four zero seven one inch. Diameter Ferris Seam Rod, please hit the like and subscribe.
I recommend the knife if you uh, want a cheap, affordable, more esque uh, type of knife. If not, just go buy a cheap Mora 511. Cheap Mora 511 is going to be a lot better than this knife. It performed okay. I gave it a 3 out of 5. It's okay. It's not a 5 like a Mora. Well, folks, if you like this video, please smash the like and subscribe. And you know, y'all know, know what you can do. Y'all put God first. He puts you first in his life. And you know what else, YouTube? God loves you. So does Hondo. Peace out. Uh, yeah. I ain't gonna lie.